Hi guys, welcome back to the Bitter Betty Podcast. So today, breaking news: Joe Biden drops out of the presidential race. What the hell is going on? We knew so, it was coming. Um, so I did hear the rumors. She come. <laughs> and um, I did hear the rumors, and we're gonna watch a brief clip. And then um, I think that all three of us have a lot of opinions. And I have opinions. I have questions. I want to know what's going on. So um, yep. I just, yeah, I'm ready. Let's take a look. Mel, roll the clip. <laughs> yeah. Welcome back to Live Now from Fox. And we have some breaking news as President Joe Biden has just announced that he is dropping out of the 2024 presidential race. This happening just moments ago you are taking a look at the letter that he has just issued and we are going to read it in its entirety it says my fellow americans over the past three and a half years we have made great progress as a nation today america has the strongest economy in the world we've made historic <laughs> investments in rebuilding our nation in lowering prescription drug costs for seniors and in expanding affordable health care to a record number of Americans. We've provided critically needed care to a million veterans exposed to toxic substances, passed the first gun safety law in 30 years, appointed the first African-American woman to the Supreme Court, and passed the most significant climate legislation in the history of the world. America has never been better positioned to lead than we are today. It goes on to say, quote, I know none of this could have been done without you, the American people. Together, we overcame a once in a century pandemic and the worst economic crisis since the Great Depression. We've protected and preserved our democracy and we've revitalized and strengthened our alliances around the world. It has been the greatest honor of my life to serve as your president. And while it had been my intention to seek reelection, I believe it is in the best interest of my party and the country for me to stand down and to focus solely on fulfilling my duties as president for the remainder of my term. I will speak to the nation later this week in more detail about my decision. For now, let me express my deepest gratitude to all those who have worked so hard to see me reelected. I want to thank Vice President Kamala Harris for being an extraordinary partner in all this work. And let me express my heartfelt appreciation to the American people for the faith and trust you have placed in me. I believe today what I have always, that there is nothing America can't do when we do it together. We just have to remember we are the United States of America. The letter signed Joe Biden. Knock, knock. Hey, there okay. was a video on there about him endorsing Kamala. I think we should watch that one. Hi there. I'd okay, love to show you what a K-12 powered school is really. <laughs> okay, so. Oh, New do live now from Fox and we have some. Sorry, guys. Uh, okay. I think it was it was on. Uh, I mean, it well, it was. I think it was still. Fo I think it was on Fox. Well, I yeah. on Fox. Yes. Uh, okay. We're gonna watch a couple. Uh, uh, yeah, that one right there. That we will win. The no Biden endorses the VP Kamala Harris after okay. dropping out. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, here on live now from Fox to break down this breaking news situation. So we're. Hang on, I don't have it up yet. Uh, over here, they can't see it. Oh. <laughs> I took it down because of the freaking ads. Uh, here on live now from Fox to break down this breaking news situation. So we're going to work on that audio issue. Uh, in the meantime, I did want to share the latest uh, information with our viewers right here. And uh, this is a social media uh, picture that President Biden has issued on the, the social media platform X. And you can see that there is a picture with uh, President Biden alongside Vice President Harris what you don't see is the message that is attached to this photo. And I do want to ring, uh, read it to you in its entirety. Uh, President Biden on X says, quote, my fellow Democrats, 
I have decided not to accept the nomination and focus all my energies on my duties as president for the remainder of my term. My very first decision as the party nominee in 2020 was to pick Kamala Harris as my vice president. And it's been the best decision I've made. Today, I want to offer my full support and endorsement for Kamala to be the nominee of our party this year. Democrats, it's time to come together and beat Trump. Let's do that. So I did want to share with you uh, the message that is attached on the X platform as President Biden has said that he is now endorsing Vice President Harris to be the nominee for his party. What's also interesting in this message, and Keith and I were talking about this just a short time ago, is the question as to whether uh, President Biden would continue to serve out his term as president or if he were to step away. The biggest question, of course, in the past number of weeks has been uh, President Biden's cognitive abilities. And there was uh, a lot of a lot of that was called into question after his debate against a former President Trump just a number of weeks ago in Atlanta, Georgia. But at least from this social media post that we're reading to you verbatim, it says that he will focus all of his energies on his uh, duties as president for the remainder of his term. So at least from this post, it looks like he will not be stepping down and he will continue to uh, uh, play out his term and then endorse uh, Vice President Harris at the Democratic uh, convention right here. But I also wanted to share this with you. We'll this is this. what we've been okay, following yeah, for at least the past 30 minutes or so. This is. Stop it there. Yeah. So, uh, okay. <clears throat> Carol, I know you have a lot to say about All right, this. So let's talk about it. All right. For one, I do think it's the responsible thing of Joe Biden or whoever is behind pushing him to go to, to, to do what he's doing. Um, I do believe that he does have some, you know, cognitive like, you know, issues going on, um, especially just with my own personal experience yeah. on um, basically, you know, cognitive behaviors and, you know, them deteriorating. Um, however, my question is, since we've already gotten this far, okay? And now you're telling me the presidential candidate that is supposed to, you know, the president who is supposed to be running for re-election is now dropping out of the race and we now need another Democrat in that spot, right? So my question is, is how come or where is my right as a registered Democrat, mm -hmm. my right to help decide, because it is a democracy, who gets that spot. Why is it just up to the president to endorse somebody? And then it has to go to the, what is it, DNC or whatever it is, to, to, to then decide, right? That's that, yeah. that that's how that's gonna work. But where is where is it for the American people? Where is it that I were to have have a voice in what's happening? Like yeah. it, it doesn't like it doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, I don't I don't know, because the primaries have already came and went and correct people voted for Biden. And so correct. now those people should uh, be able like they should have. OK, so now he's stepping down. So now I should be able to vote again. Correct. And they should have another vote. But correct. obviously that's not, I guess, how it works. But um, now I don't know if, if they're going to put someone else up at the DNC, like because uh, regardless of what happens in the primaries, like the the vote like everything that happens at the dnc will finalize like what really Correct. is right like they don't necessarily have to to do it as with the voters so i don't know how that worked exactly since kamala wasn't on the primary ticket and correct so i don't know um but it it, it just it seems weird to me because she hasn't actually done anything she's been no. terrible her her approval yes. rating is we're almost worse than his, so I don't um, I don't really see why they think the American people are going to switch up just because they switch out her. So I'm not convinced that that's actually who's going to get the nomination at the DNC. I feel like they got something up their sleeves just because that's they're sus. They're just sus. That's all I can say. Well, and next question. I'm sorry, Mel. Do you have anything to say before I start rambling on again? No, I'm just listening. <laughs> okay, so my my next question is too, is if he's 
stepping down, right, and to not run um, because of, you know, basically his cognitive levels at this point, right, his decision making, then should he remain president for the next six months? I don't think so. Like, should, should he still be able to remain president? If you can't, if you're not running for re-election, right, when you've already won the spot, you've already been nominated, you're already there, you're already the current president, but you're saying, I'm not going to continue because of basically cognitive issues, then are you then still stable enough to be running the country that I'm currently in now? This, like, was, uh, this was actually explained in a lot that I was watching earlier. Someone's like, well, yeah, but he didn't say that he's, it's his mental health. It's, he didn't say what it was. So he can't, he, he has every right to still run until that's being brought out. Whenever, mm -hmm. if, he, if there mm -hmm. is proof that it's because, and he says it out of his mouth, then yeah, he should be able to step down. I, however, I don't personally believe that. I believe that he should step down right now because he can't even hold a whole speech well, together. I mean, that's assuming that he's actually been the one running the country to begin with. Like, well, you know what I mean? So like, it really, video. honestly, I don't know that, I don't know that he has been making all the decisions anyway. So whether or not he steps down or doesn't, I don't think will make a I difference. Would... I think they are trying to push Kamala in because mm -hmm. she is just as controlled as he is. And that's what they're trying. They're trying to keep power that way. And that's why they try to take. I'm going to tell you what. I'm going to tell you what. This whole process to me, um, it has been nothing but a damn circus. Like uh, the whole thing. Do you know that other countries have got to think that we are the laughing stock of the freaking world? Like it has been a hot ass mess. Like I know. I'm just going to keep it 100. You've got the you know the Democrats going after Trump. You know. And we haven't even said where we stand yet. If you're new to these videos, you'll find out in a minute. But if you're new to us, but so you have the Democrats like firing at Trump try, with all the different accusations and different things and, you know, indictments and all this shit that's going on with Trump trying to get him locked up. So that's a fucking goddamn circus and a mess, you know, and then you have Biden who can't even walk up a set of fucking stairs without tripping <laughs> and falling, you know, and then you've got, um, people now taking shots at Trump, freaking shooting him, you know, like it, shooting, it's trying to shoot his goddamn ear off because they can't aim. So, you know, thank God. But then if somebody lost their life due to some ignorance of some other dumbass fool. And then now we've got the president who, you know, we are rewind back to before Trump was even shot, the damn circus of a debate that went on, you know, and can't even hold his own there I, 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 or form a sentence. Like right now, like I'm stuttering and fumbling because I'm frustrated. I'm a frustrated American that feels like that we live in a damn circus and we're the laughing stock of the world. That is where I stand. Like, yeah. you know, regardless of whatever issues, the policies, whatever it is, if you look at everything that's going on and mm -hmm. you literally have to sit back and be like, what the fuck is really happening? Like, well, said, what the fuck? Well, you said something a while ago and I had to go search it. You Y'all can see my screen, but they can't right now. I have it shut off so they can't see it just yet. But look at the screen. Look at the title of the first one. It says top news in that first one by Fox News. Read that. You said yeah. something about how the, Biden's not the one running our country. Mm-hmm. Oh, I know. I mean, I had to watch it. I didn't watch it all. I didn't watch it all. Stop it because I thought maybe yeah. something we, you know, I was putting makeup on and getting ready for this. So whenever I was watching it, so I stopped because... LFR went live and I enjoy what he has to say. So, well, I just, I, I just want, uh, uh, Kamala is not it for me. Yeah. Like she's not it for me. And this is where we'll go ahead. <laughs> this is where we'll go ahead and get into a little bit of things for y'all, especially if you're new to us. Um, so I am not one that's been um, in politics most of my life. Never took a moment to care much. Um, I care a little now. I care a lot now, actually, um, just the way the world's running and, uh, you know, and especially America. Yeah. And it's just so crazy right now. I am absolutely 100 percent not a Trump fan. So um, I've always voted blue, um, but uh, I cannot do blue. I cannot. The state of the world, I cannot do it. 
and I've done some more research on Trump. And, you know, am I ready to say that I'm casting a vote for Trump come November? No, because I have such this like deep in my stomach and the girls know like very much a dislike for this guy. But I've been following, I've been paying attention, you know, um, and I think that sometimes I've, and I've said this to the girls before, if you're not new to us, you've heard me say it before, you know, I don't have to like you for you to be a good boss or be good at your job, right? You can mm -hmm. be a dick ass person that doesn't mean that you don't know how to do your job, right? Yeah. Period. Mm -hmm. And so, and I keep that in mind when I keep looking and trying to research, you know, and I, and I think I'm opposite. Like a lot of people look at research to try to have their mind changed or look at things. I'm doing more research to keep looking for a reason to still not like the guy. Like I'm opposite. Like I'm not looking for reasons to like maybe debunk or whatever. I'm looking for reasons why I still shouldn't like the guy because I don't want to like him for some reason, but I'm having a harder time finding reasons to dislike Donald Trump. And so that's, that's where fair. it's getting, you know, I, I'm having a hard, and I look for them. You know, when you have somebody like me that's always disliked Trump, I'm looking for him. Before, I couldn't stand to hear the man speak. I couldn't stand to hear him talk. Like, his voice would come on, and I'm like, oh, turn it off. Like, I couldn't hear. <laughs> Yesterday, I was at a laundromat because my washer broke, and I was messaging Mel, and I said, I'm watching Trump's live, whatever he was on. He was doing his speech. I was listening to him talk. Never in a day would you thought I would have stopped what I was doing. To listen to donald trump talk now, it's funny because when you said that when you said that i was like does she mean biden is he talking somewhere because i was like nope. you don't like trump <laughs> nope i do not but it's getting harder and harder to resist the urge to be like uh, uh, fuck when, it i'm I, i'm going red <laughs> and I, like when i, I it's hard. You. when i seen the clip of his granddaughter giving that speech ah oh, it gave oh. me a little bit more love for trump it did. It made me realize that yeah. he is a human being and that he does have a life outside of politics, you know. Well, and here's the thing, and I don't necessarily want to make it all about Trump, but it's hard not to, right? When when uh, when the Democratic side now just threw a wrench in everything, and I still and I feel like I well fuck, now what? Like, now what? It's a game. Of you want me to you want me to make a decision? based on how quickly am I going to have to research somebody, know somebody. And if it's Kamala, uh, no, it's not happening. Not happening. No, I do not like her. I don't is, like her. It is a game of chess. And I have a feeling that Kamala is just, just a pawn. I don't think, I don't think she's going to be it. I just think that she's a, she's the, she's the wrench, the monkey wrench in it all right now. You know, like give me like, Get, I, I even told my husband today I would be more inclined to vote for freaking Hillary oh, no. than Kamala. Like, I'm not voting for Kamala. Like, I'm not. But you know who I would have liked to have seen? Like, uh, Michelle Obama. No. Like, uh, you know, I, but see, I liked her. I, I, so I'm, I, I liked I, Michelle. I have a strong dislike for her. <laughs> like, it's almost to your point of disliking Trump. That's how I feel about Michelle Obama. Yeah. Well, I well, started really disliking her after after some of the rhetoric, rhetoric she was like pushing about Trump that was definitely false. I mm -hmm. started having a problem with her then. Yeah, but I mean, I, I, and that's what my husband said. My husband was like, "Who in the hell are they going to get? Who is it going to be? Because if it's Kamala, sh sh people hate her just as much as they dislike Trump or uh, uh, Biden. So." You know, I, I don't even know. Like it, it. And when does the DNC vote? Do we even know? Uh, it should be in a few weeks, I think. Because I'd like to know who else is going to be on that damn ticket. Like I'm curious. Because I don't even like. I'm frustrated as an American. I really am. Which is the way the state uh, uh, of the economy and the whole country. I mean, uh, just, uh, and I'm trying to educate my myself, guys. So people in the comments, if you don't have anything like pertinent to what I said or anything helpful, don't bother. Right. Well, I, don't I, I, bother. 
Robert Kennedy, isn't he isn't he Democrat? I think he would be a better choice than the rest of them. I know the Young Turks were really like would rather have the uh, RFK than uh, anybody else. I mean, that's who they really. They have a clip talking at. about. They but the thing is, about it. something that okay, and I know we said we weren't really going to talk a whole lot because we wanted our own opinions. But the thing is, is I highly agreed with him when he said it. Um, LFR in his live today, like, and I didn't even watch mm -hmm. it all because uh, we had to get ready for this. But um, yeah. he said that. The, the one thing that the, the Democrats do is they are, they're pushing for a black female president or a female president because we've never had it and that's what they think the people want. Well, that's, well I'm not sure. I'm not what? sure Michelle Obama's off the table, honestly. I think I we'll find think out at the DNC. Because so it's the like the numbers show that she is honestly the only one that could pr that might have a chance at beating Trump right now. So, and here's the thing. I mean, but would it be appealing, be. but would yeah. it be, a, could it be appealing to a black voter to have a black woman running for president? Sure. Sure. I mean, it could honestly pull people back, like people that might like in the black community might've like, when like, okay, screw I'm Biden. Going. I'm going over to the right. Right. I'm going to vote Trump. But then you put a black female you yeah, know, that's, up that's against the Trump, point. and then that's it could the sway, right, everybody back the other way. But I can't even tell you guys that personally that that would entice me also but because yeah. I live Democratic my, lanes so long. My issue with that, though, is you're looking at the skin color, you're looking at the gender, you're not looking at the politics, you're not looking at what they can do <laughs> better for your country. You're looking, oh, this is a female, that's different. Oh, this is a black right. woman, that's different. No. You're, that's not the way you should look at it. You should go in and look at it. What can they do for my country? What are they going to do to make my country better? I don't disagree with you. I'm just simply <laughs> saying, like, yeah. I also, though, as an American person, would be enticed mm -hmm. by that. You know what I mean? Because that's like that. That's exactly what they're trying to do, right? They're throwing out the bait, right? Yeah. That's exactly what that is. They're throwing out the bait. But I'm not even saying that just black americans would be enticed by that i'm saying like anybody that followed the left for a long time or republican for a long time any of those things or just as a woman in general all those things can be very enticing to to sway that vote you know back over especially if you had us in the middle and you've got a couple of us that are like really kind of right here and and, and lean into the right trying to figure out what we're going to do and then you throw a wrench in the system and now you give me like you know well that's uh, part of the, the chess game know. though that's well the it, but it depends plan. if she gets up there say michelle obama is running and her agenda is the exact same as what it is now shit ain't going to change and it's only going to get worse so is the comfort of voting for someone that happens to be on the blue team rather than the person you dislike his personality on the red team knowing that he's been proven to have the better economy and the better policies like I think identity politics is failing now. I think it's on its way out. And I think people have woken up to the fact that if we put another Democrat in there, we're probably going to get a lot more of the same because that's exactly what we get every single time. And so I think people are tired of it. And people know that Trump has been proven to have better border security, a better economy, better jobs, uh, better policies, uh, better foreign policies, for sure. Only president to never declare a new war during his term. Uh, I mean, the dude was respected uh, by foreign nationals everywhere. So, I mean, the, the, the choice for me is very simple. I do not vote on personality. I don't need Trump to be a nice guy. I don't give a fuck if he's a nice guy or not. He can tweet all the bullshit he wants to as long as he fixes this country. country right. Like, absolutely. I don't need him to be nice. Yeah. I'm over yeah. I'm over the nice niceties. I'm over it. I'm over yes. it. I need, yeah. I'm tired of being broke. I'm tired of working three jobs and being broker than I was when I was working one job. I am I, done. I would like to be able to go so, to the grocery store and not spend three hundred dollars on a hundred dollars worth of groceries. <laughs> well, and it has nothing to do with whether it's someone from the blue or somebody from the red. It's because proven track records. If I look at the Democratic side, it's all of the same bullshit. They are not offering me anything different. When I look yeah. at the Republicans, I have some issues with them, but Trump has a proven track record, and I think he can turn shit around. Mm -hmm. So that is why I will vote for Trump. And see, it's my thing is, is I would have to see like 
who it is, right? And what they have to say. And I would have to like pay attention, you know? Yeah. Um, I would have to do basically be devil's advocate. And, you know, and I, and I, I do that a lot anyways, right? That's always what I do. Like I can have my own opinion, but I'm still like, but did we look at this or but did we look at that? Like I, I've always been, um, I try to be central for the most part. No, and then I like to play devil's advocate. I, what I want to do is whenever we find out who it is that's running against Trump, what I want to do is I want to get a list of all of their politics and what they want to do to help this country. And I want to get Trump's. I want to put them side by side. And I would like for us to discuss them like mm -hmm. here because we need to figure out, okay, but then we need to go into the details and figure it. Cause sometimes they say shit that I'm like, what the hell does that mean? So like, I, yeah. I like to figure it all out and then go into detail on how this is going to make things better or worse, you know, on our opinions, not anybody else's, but ours. Yeah. No, that's, uh, yeah. I, I agree with that. Like, cause when it comes down to it, like I vote on policies, I yeah, really don't care. Might make who us the have person a, is. learn something from the other person, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, because here's my thing that I've that I've noticed a lot when it comes to politics, which is why I've a lot of times geared no, out or can't stand. Um, I can't stand um, politicians in general, right? Yeah, is because I feel like you tell me about these policies, or you tell me things that you want to do, or tell me things you want to implement, but then I don't see it. Right. I feel like it's all lies. All uh, It just spits a whole bunch of lies. Yeah. It's a bunch right. of just venom that flies out of your mouth. Mm -hmm. And then I'm hit with it and I'm supposed to believe your bullshit. Like, that's I how I an, feel. I have another idea, though. So we could take the politics that they're, they're given, that they're talking about, everything that they're saying. We can go over the years on each candidate and go over the years and see where they have kept their word and where they haven't. And then yeah. we'll compare. Well, the, the problem, the problem with the problem with checks and balances is when, like, you know, Trump was in office, like, if, like, the way things are voted on, like, right. if you are, if you're heavier on the Democratic side, then they're going to oppose everything you want to do. So a lot of times he got held up because of the opposition of the opposite side, because, you know, neither side can work together really bipartisanly anymore, uh, for the most part. Like, there's very few things that the left and right can bipartisan vote on these days. Everything is very one-sided what on both sides same thing the republicans are going to block the democrats at every turn because they don't agree right so that's when it comes down to people not necessarily being able to keep their word this is what their agenda is this is what they want to accomplish but that doesn't mean they're going to be able to accomplish it if the if people aren't willing to work together and that's the biggest problem i think that our country is facing right now is that our government can't work together and they refuse to work together and if they don't work together, then why should any of us work together? You know what I mean? Like, so it, it starts, it starts with everyone. A lot of people say it starts with us individuals and it does, but like it really, it, everyone has to be involved. It's not, you, you know, know what I think I, 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 it would be more fair if, if, or not, I don't even know how to describe what I want to say, but like in my mind, right? Like if your president is a Republican, right? then your vice president should be a Democrat be and you're I've already, and you're, yeah, yeah, I've said that. And you're, I've said that and you're, before. Yes. And like your cabinet needs to be a diverse mix. Like you can't have all yeah. Republicans. You can't have all like you, 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 because then that would be a way to make it more like an even playing ground when you're bringing things forward to yeah. get whatever it is you're trying to get passed because it has to go all through the different levels of you know, the legislation. So, like, uh, it's just frustrating to me. I think I we don't it's even, frustrating. to be perfectly honest, and I've always believed this, I think that we don't even need a president. I think we could govern the country ourselves. But the thing is, is we have to have enough people that are willing to stand up and say that, you know? Well, I think well, we still need someone to run the free world. I still I think, think we have, so. have yeah. I, we still need somebody in charge. of Because uh, yeah. uh, if not, then it would be chaos. Like, who's going to? even help organize anything well, there's a to way around speak out. it's just it's just I, I don't know how to exactly word it but like there, there's a way around it it's just i don't know i i do believe that i don't think and and the more and more i learn about the democratic party the more and more i think that they're 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 our own enemy to our own country well and because i, I i've lived in that lane for so long i don't necessarily agree with a lot of that i think that there's just a lot of this you know wokeism that's really 
kind of like worked its way into the policies of I'm different not things. Really talking about and the think, wokeism. I'm talking about like the the racism. They 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 are the cause of so much division in our country. Uh, what which is part of the wokeism. Like is, that's what I'm saying. I've like well, wokeism, race, wokeism as in the the radicals, right? The radicals. Yes. Who are the ones yes. who are actually causing all the issues and the problems? Like, right? Because I would say there's like JFK liberals, and then there's like, or JFK Democrats, and then there's like this new age liberal progressive weirdo, right? Yeah, like, yeah, I don't know yeah. what the fuck this is right. over here. You know, <laughs> I I am more like a JF. I would say a JFK Democrat, where like a regular normal Democrat is actually much more moderate. Like Bill Maher is a very good example of. Uh, like he's an old school Democrat, he's an old school liberal. Uh, he definitely still is really fighting that Trump derangement syndrome a hundred percent, but he has been very fair when it comes to a lot of stuff having to do with Trump, even though he doesn't like him, he is still very fair in his assessment of situations. And, and I, that's I what I'm trying him. to do. And that's I what I'm trying to do so, now. I respect but, him. uh, right. You know, so it's, uh, there is normal Democrats and it's like, so, the people that I have a problem with are those radicals or the, the wokest or the people, the people that are just so extreme that they're, they're offended by everything. They have to be victims for everything. Anything they can do to be a victim, that's what they're going to do. Anything to woe is me and get a free handout. And that's the the, what they want. They just want everything dangerous. handed to them. They're entitled. And they, they honestly, those are the people who say some of the most, the, some of the most so racist shit, like, you, you know, like how, those- we need to call you know how black people, people can't get IDs because the they're not cult. like they can't get we need they to, can't make it there to the ID place to get an ID. Right. We need to call I those people the the View cult because they remind me of the people who watch yeah. the View. And yeah, that's exactly sit there who they and are. Praise the hell out of them! Like those people, those women get on my fucking nerves. Dude, the View. <laughs> that's a whole other look. I got a, a I, podcast. I, yeah, I got a whole separate place for Whoopi. <laughs> yeah. So, Ooh. Lord have well, mercy. <laughs> But yeah, so I mean, th- I mean, that's kind of where we, I guess we could probably wrap up, you know, talking about yeah. like trying to, my thing is ultimately is, is where, where, where are, is the DNC going to come up with, you know, who, who is it just, I mean, obviously the president has, you know, endorsed Kamala. Um, I'm not happy about that. I want a different choice. You know, I want somebody else to look at, and that still does stem from, like the hatred that I have for Trump, right? Like it's a deep seated. I yeah. and the thing is, is I can't even tell you one particular thing that he did that I'm just like, that's why I hate that guy. It's just been so many it like could, little like. Have I, you I what, what what news? Like when you watch the news, or where did you get your news from? Because I feel like that's part of like what people call TDS, like or terms arrangement syndrome. Is like they they push so much negative stuff that turned out to not all be true. That like that's just the image people have of him now. Um, I didn't like Trump before he even ran. See, and that's what I was like. Ask, is, I, did I, it, I didn't be, like. Was did, like. Hang on, was there like a, a certain maybe, thing that happened or? Well, that, what I was going to ask. What I was going to ask is, did you watch The Apprentice? Was it maybe the way he presented himself, like maybe cocky? And it just rubbed I, me wrong because uh, I well, felt I, that way. I, I didn't care for Trump prior to The Apprentice. Okay, like, like I just been ever like I think it was just because you're like, here's this rich guy. He's filed yeah. bankruptcy a gazillion times. You know, he, you know, he's he's a good businessman. He's a good businessman. Okay, well, what good businessman bankrupt so well, many times? Okay. Like, well, no, no, so no. Well, just, cause, okay, so that's but that's a misconception, right? That's a misconception. Right. That, like he had some companies that went bankrupt because they went under, but he himself was never actually bankrupt, and mm-hmm. he's like remade his fortune several times over, and he's the only president to go into the White House and not actually take it. He donated his salary to other stuff and actually left the office with less money than he went into. He's the only president that that's mm-hmm. happened to, like so. But like he also like. The, it was only bankrupt a couple of times and it was like certain businesses. It wasn't like him completely. Uh, but he he has so many, like, because he has real estate, he has other businesses. Like, okay, speaking of real estate, water, shit like that. Yeah. Tell me that. So, so again, maybe you can help me debunk this because it's something else that's always like on my okay. mind. <clears throat> so, when people talk about being racist or different things with Trump, like, there was, um, and I can't remember where the source came from, because who knows? It was probably some leftist, because that's what I watch mm-hmm. a lot of, what I apparently. But, like, <laughs> um, not allowing, um, 
black people to rent from him. Yeah, it wasn't black people. It was first. Well, so okay. First of all, it was the management of the place that was turning away. That was potentially turning away people for being black. Uh, the, that manager might have been racist. I don't know that for sure, but that was from what I read. That's what I got from that. But Trump was not renting out in that particular area to people on welfare, and a lot of those people just happened to be black. So it was more of a correlation, not really a causation in that sense. But I don't know about the manager. Something about the manager when I was reading up on that dude, like that was he was a little sus. Mm-hmm. Not gonna seemed lie, a little, he seemed a little whatever. Yeah, yeah, like because there was a couple of people, like because he was the one who was turning him away. Like Trump, like I said, he has several real estate, you know, things. He has several other corporations and businesses and moving parts that he has to hire people to do these. How, how those people act is not something he can always control right like because sometimes he might not even know what's going on until it's been going on but there was a lawsuit and it all came out or whatever and the basis for him was he was not renting to people on welfare it had nothing to do with what color you were it was about welfare because there was also another lady who was either um i think she was either black or hispanic and she was actually um squatting in an empty apartment in like trump towers or one of his apartments or condo you know whatever his places people live at whatever it's called and um they they ended up contacting him was like hey we need you know do you want us to kick her out and he ended up letting her live there for free and he would have flowers delivered to her mm-hmm. and yeah. stuff in that apartment like people fail to remember like that. so i've heard i've heard i've heard and but then i've you know there was the thing with the central park five that i wasn't crazy about i haven't did, did a deep deep dive into that one yet but um but i could understand in this situation like wanting somebody to pay i don't know if you all know what i'm talking about but there was um there was five black men who were um accused of committing a very very heinous crime and like anybody would have been upset about the crime itself and it turned out to be other people or, or not them or maybe yeah, because no, it was Central Park Five. About. It was five men, but but it turned out not to be them. But he was pushing for like you know the death penalty and stuff. But it, it didn't have anything to do with their black. It had the fact that they they he had believed that they committed the this really heinous prom. crime. Yeah. Right. So um, whether or not he came out and apologized for that later, I don't know. I don't know if people would like because I mean at the same time like he was really angry about the crime being committed and he thought he genuinely thought those because they had been arrested for that crime. Right. So he thought literally thought they had done it, but um you know so but everybody makes mistakes i'm not gonna like i'm not gonna hold him to some higher standard than myself like i've made plenty of mistakes and shit i'm definitely not proud of so he's still human uh, at the end right. of the day absolutely. yeah absolutely yeah but i feel like but that's what i'm saying is like because everything is so polarized like i've really had to do a deep dive and like search out the actual information and rather than listen to what news play uh whether it's fox or anywhere else like i have to do go to several different articles and like try and read up on actual lawsuits and shit like that because it, it's so one-sided and manipulative because yes you could say that that like you know because trump was not renting out to people from welfare but they made it sound like he wasn't renting out to people who were black it just happened to be that those people who were black were you know on welfare and he wasn't renting to people on welfare because generally they couldn't pay they couldn't pay right they, they would most likely not be able to pay for rent. Like it's kind of like now when you go to rent an apartment, you know, you have to make two times the amount of rent or whatever it is a month or yeah. three times the amount of rent a month in order to live there. It, it's a, that's how you it know, was with the house that we're renting. We yeah. There was places it. I couldn't rent because I didn't make enough to like live in those places, which is probably good. Cause I probably wouldn't have been able to afford rent when it came around time. Right. Cause I'm not very, well, I'm not always I, great with my money. I do think, I do think that's a good idea because of the fact that, no, we, we he's they're giving us time to be able to pay our, our electricity bill, our water bill, all that stuff too. Having to make that much more money, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, if there's a whole yeah. thing on welfare, like I I I believe like welfare plays a big part in the decimation of the um the nuclear family within black America. And like I could do an entire podcast on just that shit alone. Well, and then speaking of that, that's what I was gonna say, we should uh wrap up this particular oh yes podcast. we should and then can literally keep going <laughs> yeah. and then if you guys want to you know there'll be more parts like we're, we're going to continue this conversation oh yeah this um, whole week's going to be filled with this maybe a couple of songs but like this whole week is gonna yeah be filled of this yeah. yes a lot, a lot of yeah. politics because I, i'm trying to educate myself so yeah um you guys Some crazy should be going on yes so thank you so much for stopping by today we appreciate it 
Um, and just real quick, always as a reminder, like, comment, subscribe. And if you want to support the channel, that's linked below as well. Uh, and we'll catch you in the next one. Peace out. Oh, yeah. We also have a uh, merch shop. Go, go check it out. Get the merch. <laughs> Pick something up. Peace out.